Hello everyone and welcome to Geo Prediction 2021 presentation for our team from North Dakota State University. We are honored to be a part of the finalists. My name is Mohammed Mohammed. Hello, my name is Hossein Imami. Let's start our presentation. Our presentation will be in four parts. Problem, method, data and results. Let's go through our problem. We are given a site that there is one existing building and we are going to do some construction activities such as excavation and also dewatering. Excavation will not affect our settlement but dewatering will do. So we are going to provide solution how we can predict the settlement due to dewatering at 150 days of dewatering and also 285 days. And also, in order to solve this problem, we are given some information. Information about soil profile at borehole number one, borehole number two, and borehole number three. And also soil properties at borehole number one. In addition, we are giving some information about the uh, dewatering rate at uh, different days. So, let's find out how we can solve this problem. So in order to find the final answers for this problem, we used the following method. We sectioned each dewatering period into its own settlement because uh, throughout each period of time, the water elevation changes, which changes the rate of settlement. So for accuracy, each period was sectioned on its own. So first, in order to calculate the settlement, uh, in each period, we first start by measuring the radius of influence during that time. So the radius of influence is found through this equation that is extracted from uh, the dewater, a dewatering man manual, uh, where C is equal to 3, uh, specifically since we consider this to be gravity flow. And then capital H is the initial uh, water table elevation. HW is the water table elevation at the pumping location. And K is the permeability of soils expressed in 10 to the power of negative 4 centimeters per second. Uh, plugging in all the values uh, for the first period, we get a, a radius of influence of 452.07 feet. But then the, the permeability found is through uh, the equivalent permeability method where we took the permeabilities given to us for the clay layer throughout each depth and measured the average of that permeability values. And then for well-graded gravel, it was just assumed that it was it had a permeability of 0.5 centimeters per second as it is a common value to use for well-graded gravel. And then desiccated layers, uh, desiccated crust layer is considered impermeable, so it won't impact the equivalent permeability. So taking all these values and averaging them out between uh, boring hole 1 to boring hole 3, we get an equivalent permeability of 0.12 centimeters per second. Taking the radius of influence information and plugging it in this following equation, uh, for finding the water table elevation at the measurement location, where H is again the initial water table elevation, L is the radius of influence this time instead of R, Y is the distance between the settlement measurement location and the dewatering location, HE this time is water table elevation at dewatering location, and H is new water table elevation at settlement measurement location that we are looking for. And this equation is found from the dewatering manual as well. For uh, calculation for the first period for water table elevation, it was found to be 227.35 feet. Then taking that water elevation, next to calculate the effective overburden pressure in the soil, where we assumed that dry unit weight of fill layer to be 124 PCF, and we calculated from the information given that clay layer unit weight is 115 PCF. And then plugging in all the information that we have into this equation, 
to give us uh, for the first period of uh, dewatering to give us an effective overburden pressure in the soil of nearly 2000 PSF. And then also we need to consider the effective stress that's applied from the MAP foundation, which is a constant effective stress throughout all the periods and it will not change. And the way to find it is through the method of vertical stress caused by a rectangularly loaded area, uh, where it is a method that's uh, a tabulated method from uh, any soil mechanics book, where Q is the bearing pressure from mat foundation, uh, which is given to us to be 1520 PSF, and I4 is the factor value for settlement measurement location under mat foundation which is found using those tables from soil mechanics books, uh, which eventually it gave us a value of, of effective stress for map foundation to be 564.8 PSF. After that, we use all those values to uh, plug into this equation for total primary settlement where CC in this uh, equation is the compression index, which is found from the liquid limit of the clay layer, uh, where we calculated the average to be 39% liquid limit, which eventually gave us a compression index of 0.261. And then we also calculated the initial void ratio of the soil to be 1.0233. And then plugging in all the information that we have in that settlement equation to give us a total primary settlement of the first period to be 0.4425 feet. And then of course we take the uh, total primary settlement to find the settlement during the period of time given, which is found through the uh, degree of consolidation U multiplied by the, the total primary settlement. Uh, U is found through the value of uh, TV, which is a time factor. Uh, while it's uh, calculated from uh, this equation that CV stands for the uh, coefficient of consolidation, which we approximated to be 0.2325 feet per day squared. For the first period, TV was found to be 0 0.01361. And then corresponding to that TV value, U was 13.15%. Plug in all the information that we got so far to give us a settlement during the first period of 0.698 inches. After that settlement occurs, the void ratio will change, creating a new void ratio, which is calculated by rearranging the total primary settlement equation into uh, the corresponding to the new values for the height of the clay layer and uh, given us the new void ratio of the soil. And then this new void ratio of the soil will be reused for the next period of time and so on and so forth. This until you reach the final period of time that you're measuring the settlement in. And this concludes the methods. Now we are going to walk through some of the data now let's look at our calculated data based off of our assumption for uh, permeability of different layers of soil we have calculated equivalent permeability for our whole layer and also we have calculated the height of water table for different time periods and Based off of our assumption for CV, CC, we have calculated our settlement for different period of time. These are done for calculating our final result. Our final results for the prediction is that after 150 days of dewatering, the measurement location will settle 1.911 inches. And after 285 days of dewatering, the measurement location will settle 3.289 inches. And this is all for this presentation. Thank, Thank you, you for, for watching. watching. And please feel free to reach out through email if you have any questions.